our record in tournaments against sides ranked higher than us is not particularly impressive. And of course, who else has got the stats? Jim Proudfoot's got the stats. No, it's not good. It isn't good. I mean, the last time that England beat a side ranked above them in a major tournament was 2002, the group stage of the World Cup, when England, who was seventh at the time, beat Argentina with that David Beckham penalty. They were first in the rankings at the time. Since then, England have only played five games against sides ranked above them, but haven't won any of them. Three defeats and two draws, both of the draws being in knockout games and England lost the penalty shootout as a result. So France in 2004, a group game, the quarterfinal elimination to Portugal in 2006 and the third place playoff at, um, in 2018, the final of 2020 against Italy and then the quarterfinal elimination uh, in Qatar against France. So in 18 games that England have ever played in major tournaments, against sides ranked above them. They've won only five. They've had eight draws, and those eight draws include five penalty shootouts, of which they've only won one of the five. So it's a poor record. And, you know, we bring it up because of the fact that England's remaining game or remaining two games, whatever unfolds, will both be against sides who are ranked above them uh, in the world. And it's just, how do we find the formula? How do you turn a record like that around? Because that is a consistent failure on a level. That's not a given England team. That is, that's wholesale failure that over England teams going back to 1958 was the first time that England played a side who were ranked above them in a major tournament, which was Brazil in that 1958 World Cup. So, you know, that's a record that goes back since then. Since 1958, five wins and a penalty shootout victory against Spain. That's it. You could argue that that's how it should be. If they're ranked above us, they're better than us. I'm talking very crudely, very basic terms. They're better than us, so they should beat us. So it takes a massive effort. But is there some sort of psychological problem there, do you think, with the England team that they can't, more often than not, they can't overcome a side ranked higher? Well, it's a strange one. I don't think I ever knew whenever I played against the team whether they're ranked above or below us. You had a, an idea let's say, let's say Cameroon at the World Cup. I, if someone said to me, are they ranked below us or above? I would know. Yeah. I wouldn't have known whether the Belgians were or whether the Germans were, I guess. In, or whether the Dutch ways. were in 2012. No, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't yeah. have known that. So <laughs> from a psychological aspect. <laughs> oh, I see what you've done there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get some sensibility back on this programme tonight and you two buffoons <laughs> have decided to take me in another direction. But there are times you don't actually know. I don't, I'm not sure the no. players are acutely aware if it's, you know, a couple of places one way or the other. But generally, I mean, now we're, we're ranked, on average, we're, we're definitely top 10 all the time. Yes. Um, and well, nearly so, all the time. Nearly all the time. And... I think the players will be aware who's above them in those rankings. Generally, they might not know the positions, but they'll be aware that France will be above them, for example. Yes, and they would, I think, expect that Spain would be above them. Then they're not in the FIFA World Rankings. They are in the, the yellow ratings, which is the one we're talking about. Um, the Dutch, for instance, they won't know either way. I mean, it has changed over the course of this tournament. They won't know. And let's be honest about it. They won't care. But it is a, a, a bigger picture, I think. If you have a look at England's performances against top 10 sides in the world, now this is irrespective of whether they're above England or below England, whether England are in the top 10 at the time or not. 42 games, 12 wins. Since the 1970 World Cup, England have only won six out of 28 games in major tournaments against top 10 opposition. That is an alarming record. You go further, against top 12 opposition, 13 wins out of 53. So they're batting at less than 250 against top 12 opposition over more than 50 years in tournament football. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should be winning every other game, but I am suggesting that that is a bit low. Let me give a bit of context to it. You have a look at matches that have been played against sides ranked in the top 10, during Gareth Southgate's reign. So let's have a look at the records that all four semi-finalists have had over that time. Okay. England, in tournament play against top 10 sides under Gareth, two wins, two draws, four defeats. Spain, two wins, two draws, no defeats. 
Now, the Dutch have struggled to qualify, so their record of two draws is entirely based on what we've seen over the last month. That's probably not representative. France, though, seven wins, four draws, no defeats. So they've had 11 games in major tournaments since Gareth Southgate's been England boss. They haven't lost any of them. They've unbeaten in 11 against top 10 opposition. That is extraordinary. It's just an astonishing record. Against top six sides, they've lost one out of 13. That's not in tournaments, that's generally. So it includes Nations League, qualifiers, whatever. One in 13, one defeat in 13 against sides ranked one to six in the world. England's record, two wins in 14, and they've lost eight. Wow. So okay. there is room for improvement. That's fair to say. And for England, the, the point I want to make, really, I think, is that if England want to be challenging for major honours on a consistent basis and taking that next step, and dare I say it, taking the final step, because what has happened over the last six years has been a massive step forward, getting to four quarterfinals in a row for the first time ever, and three of those have been semi-finals, and hopefully, touch wood, two of them will be finals. But to take that final step of competing for major honours on a regular basis, that has got to improve, because the records of France and Spain and the Netherlands and Germany and Portugal is much better than two wins in 14 against top six opposition. What I'd like to add to that is that there will be people listening to this, watching this on our YouTube channel, basically saying, well, this is why Gareth Southgate isn't up to the job. I think this record was similar before Gareth Southgate came along. Yeah, so that's two wins in 14 in the most successful England side that there has been for a long time because of their qualification for the latter parts of major tournaments. Mm. So it's a run that goes back a long way. And I, I go back, I refer the right honourable gentleman to the answer I gave some moments ago. Indeed. 13 wins in 53 games since 1970 in major tournaments against top 10 opposition. 13 wins in 54 years of major tournaments against top 10 opposition and 40 failures. So if you're thinking just to point a winner, which is what we've done in the past. We think we've appointed a winner as manager and then it doesn't happen. The same record continues. What I will say is, I think, and you and I have talked about this, Stuart, step by step, one by one, Gareth Southgate has broken down some barriers, be it a penalty shootout win at the World Cup, be it going deep consistently time and time again in tournaments. And one thing he has done, the tournament record for teams below England in the rankings has been brilliant recently. They're unbeaten in 14 That's tournaments. Absolutely correct. So, right. so that's the longest run that England have ever had in their history of un, a longest unbeaten run against lower ranked opposition in major tournaments. The last time that England were beaten by a side uh, that was below them was that World Cup semi-final to Croatia. Since then, they've had 14 games and they've won uh, nine of those, drawn the other five and one of those five was a penalty shootout victory so uh, point I want to make on this is under Gareth Southgate he's winning the games you would expect England to win but that wasn't always the case we lost to Iceland in 2016 there are no more Icelands under Gareth Southgate that just you can't see that happening now we may not be pretty when we win those games or mm. get through those games but we're not being humiliated and embarrassed at major tournaments like we used to be we well, certainly not. There's a level of consistency. I remember sitting in Wembley, Wembley Stadium doing a commentary with you gentlemen a couple of years ago and, and turning around and saying, the one thing you can guarantee, you can't guarantee the result, but you can guarantee a level of performance. Um, and I think in the main, we've offered a level of performance. I think this has been a little bit stark, this tournament, and made one or two of us sit up and listen because we were expecting a touch more mm. from the performance as such. Um, but listen... Jim does so well with these stats. It's brilliant. Um, it, it's obviously clear to me what we've got to do is get in touch with the people who do the rankings and tell them to, t to <laughs> tell the world we're number one. So everyone's <laughs> below us. So that might improve our, our ability to do so. But I think, like, like you alluded to, and that's the one thing that came in my mind when Jim was talking about that, I think we're chipping away at this. You know, we're chipping away at the penalties. We're chipping away at you know, getting to the latter stages more regularly. It's an upward curve We're now regularly beating those lower than us. Exactly. That's not a problem anymore. It used to be a problem. Yeah. It's not a problem anymore, seemingly. 
Um, and again, I'll, I'll touch wood there. Was ist das? Talksport? 